Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. Last lecture we discussed the cross sections of nuclear reactions. We discussed the cross sections for neutron induced reactions and the charged particle induced reactions. In the case of neutron induced reactions, cross section in decreases with increasing energy of the neutron, then in the intermediate region there are resonances. Whereas in the case of charged particle induced reactions, cross section increases beyond a threshold value of ECM equal to BC and after that it goes rising. We also saw how to determine the cross sections experimentally by measurement of excitation functions or even by measurement of particle spectra and angular distribution. Today we will discuss the mechanism of different types of reactions and mostly I will be focusing on the dominant mechanism that is the compound nucleus reaction. So just let us see in a nutshell what are the different types of reactions that occur when a projectile bombards a target. So I have given a schematic here. This is actually in the time zone, time zone as a function of time how it is happening. So the projectile is bombarding a target nucleus and many a times you know what will happen in fact it is always there a component of elastic scattering. Elastic scattering is nothing but you know a sort of a billiard ball collision between the two bodies a projectile and a target and uh, then this in the elastic scattering I will be discussing very shortly what are the things that are conserved which are not conserved and so on but this is actually not included in the nuclear reaction component. and this elastic scattering is always there whenever a reaction is there. So it can happen immediately that is what is I have written the initial stage that projectile just collides with the target and that undergoes elastic scattering. In fact that Coulomb scattering other force scattering is also coming in the category of elastic scattering. Then we come to the intermediate zone where the projectile is now coming in close vicinity of the target nucleus and before that in fact before the, it is completely fusing with the target there is a type of reactions called direct reactions that means the projectile and target projectile comes close to target nucleus and there is a transfer of few nucleons from projectile to target or vice versa so that happens at a much smaller time scale than than the compound nuclear formation which we will discuss in length later on. And many a times you know they, they can form a compound nucleus, the compound nucleus part we will discuss in detail in this lecture and the compound nucleus can again you know give rise to that projectile back. So it is a, it, the, this is what is called the compound elastic sketch. The projectile it is like you know projectile goes into the well of the nucleus and comes back with the same energy as it entered. So this is called the compound elastic scattering. There is a very small difference in the, the phenomena of elastic scattering and compound elastic scattering. And then the last stage is the compound nucleus formation that takes place after a lot of time. Now the time scales you know in nuclear reactions will be for elastic scattering and direct reaction 10 power minus 22 seconds. For the compound nuclear formation, 10 power minus 17 seconds. So that is the time of time scale that we are talking about. So when you say compound elastic scattering, it has happened in the time scale of 10 power minus 17 seconds. So the compound nucleus lifetime is a order of minus 17 seconds, and in that lifetime, it is all the projectile and target combined together form a mononucleus equilibrium in all degrees of freedom. And then the subsequent de excitation of the compound nucleus can take place by emission of particles, gamma rays, and so on. So, that is what is called the final stage. So, on the way, the projectile can have different types of reactions with the target nucleus, namely elastic scattering, compound elastic scattering, direct reactions, and the compound nucleus formation. These are the main types of reactions 
and the time scale is as you go from right left to right the time scale of the reaction is increasing you can also explain the different mechanisms that take place when a projectile bombards a target and in fact this is in the context of a projectile which is rather heavy compared to a neutron a proton and so on so when we say this this what i have drawn in the schematic is the target nucleus and the projectile is coming at different distance from the center of the target so we if you recall the previous lecture we defined the angular momentum involved in a nuclear reaction and so the angular momentum for the central collisions that means the impact parameter is zero so angular momentum if you recall equal to b into p in fact parameter into the momentum so when the impact parameter is close to zero here so this is what is the impact parameter so the central collision means impact parameter is close to zero for them the angular momentum is zero so it is here so what i have plotted also here the angular momentum dependent cross section versus the angular momentum and so it is nothing but the 2l plus 1 sigma l 12 plus 1 and you can have the transmission coefficient also so this triangle is actually like 2l plus 1 and then afterwards also so for the central collisions where the angular momentum is low the projectile will be fusing with the target or forming a compound nucleus formation which is also called as the complete fusion the projectile and target nuclei fuse together to form what is called as the compound nucleus when you go to little bit away so it is either we go this way or this way it is symmetric so this is a impact parameter where they are just grazing when we say grazing collisions means they are just touch and go so during the touching process there could be a transfer of few nucleons from projectile to target or target to projectile so that is why this and the grazing collisions lead to transfer reactions so where they just come and touch each other and during that touch at that time scale there could be some transfer from one to other process so they are at the higher so this is what in the higher impact parameter means so trans transfer reactions taking place and then there are distant collisions which are beyond the physical boundary of the target so the distant collisions are like coulomb scatter they come in the coulomb potential in the vicinity of each other's coulomb potential and escape so that is like you know rather force scattering it so so the as we go away from the target center the angular momentum is increasing and so the different reactions are taking place that i have tried to explain and so the different cross sections for different processes compound nucleus and transfer reaction the coulomb scattering will not come in the category of nuclear reactions because they do not come in the vicinity of the nuclear potential of each other the nuclear reactions take place when they come they experience the nuclear potential of each other and so if they only come in the coulomb potential of each other so we say they are not nuclear reactions so cross section sigma l versus l will take care of only the nuclear reactions like compound nucleus direct transfer and so on okay let us now see these reactions in more details this is the first type of reaction though we we will not call it as a you know the reaction cross section dot does not include the elastic scattering also but it's good to know exactly what are the different types of cross processes that are happening in the elastic scattering so in the elastic scattering as i have mentioned already here this is a projectile and this is the target the projectile and target collide with each other and they go away from each other is retain their identity so they remain as a small a capital secondly the most important is that the kinetic energy is conserved the kinetic energy is conserved means the projectile and target may have projectile may have some energy ea like for example it could be zero so it can transfer some kinetic energy to the target nucleus suppose this is zero normally when the target nucleus is stationary then ea is zero now 
the projectile can transfer some part of its energy to the target nucleus. Both of the projectile and target are now having some kinetic energy. It is that's what is happening, you know. When your projectile is colliding with target, then they can go in different direction. So some energy of projectile has been given to the target nucleus, but it remains as kinetic energy. So total kinetic energy of projectile and target after the scattering is same as that of the projectile. That's what we mean that the kinetic energy is conserved. So it is it is only trans it can be transferred from projectile to target during the collision, but it does not it, it is not lost or it is not transformed to other type of energy like excitation energy and so on. The important uh, criteria in elastic scattering is that the kinetic energy is conserved. So I have given a type given an example of neutrons when the neutrons are reducing their energy they are moderated. So they collide with the target material like A and in the process neutron will go, give some kinetic energy to the target nucleus. So the, the final energy of neutron and target nucleus is equal to initial energy of neutron. And if you recall the previous lectures, then the energy of the target nucleus, maximum energy that can be given to target nucleus can be given for Mn Ma, the energy of neutron into Mn plus Ma square. And so for example, when A equal to 1, then Ea equal to En. That means if the mass of the neutron and mass of the target nucleus is same like hydrogen, proton, then it can give all energy in one collision. So proton, that is why we say hydrogen is the best moderator. In one collision, all energy of neutron can be given to hydrogen. So hydrogen, hydrogenous material will reduce the energy of neutron fastest. So that, that is the reason why we say hydrogen is the best moderator. Moderator means we are trying to reduce the energy of neutron from whatever energy neutron has to, to begin with and we are trying to thermalize. So the number of collisions that take that is required to bring the neutron to thermal energy is called the how many collisions are taken. So that, that number is much less for hydrogen. If you have a higher jet, higher mass number material, you require more collisions. For hydrogen, even one collision is sufficient. So that is the way we explain the moderating power of a target material for neutrons. Next type of reaction is the elastic scattering. In elastic scattering, again, again, it says it is in the name itself, but it is it is scattering. That means the projectile and target retain their identity, like A plus A, A dash plus A star. So I have put a star because now the kinetic energy of projectile is not conserved. Some part of the kinetic energy of projectile is transferred to a target nucleus, so the target can get excited. So total kinetic energy before and after the scattering is not conserved now. So some part of kinetic energy was transferred to target nucleus and its excitation energy. And in fact, such reactions, though the masses of the projectile, the reactants products are same, but the target is not in a, suppose you have the target, it is now excited state, A plus A going to A, so it is excited plus A dash. So this much is the Q value of this reaction, though it is the nucleus is same, the mass in terms of the masses, the Q value is zero, but this much energy is tied up. So this excited state of nucleus has an excited energy and this much energy is required from the initial projectile energy. So you can say the Q value is not constant, the Q value is less than 0. So Q value is also given as Ea plus Ea dash minus Ea. So now this value is negative because some part of the energy of the projectile has been transferred to and excess energy. In fact, there are applications of inelastic scattering in the form of some ion beam reactions. This is called the particle induced gamma emission, PIGI. So you can have excitation of a target nucleus and then this excited nucleus can emit a gamma ray and that gamma ray carry the signature of that nucleus. So if you count the, the gamma rays, these are prompt gamma rays emitted instantaneously. So then this technique, this is an ion beam analysis technique for material characterization. So 
when you bombard the target nucleus with a projectile like proton, so PP dash in el inelastic scattering of proton with target materials of aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and so on, then the excited nuclei of aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus they can they de excite by emission of its characteristic gamma rays, and these gamma rays can be measured by a germanium detector. And so the intensity of the gamma ray essentially tells you the concentration of these elements. So for the material characterization, the inelastic scattering is utilized in as a form of ion beam analysis technique. So this is a simple setup for Piggy. You have a scattering chamber. It can be having a diameter of 50 centimeter or even more than that under vacuum, temper minus six star or better. And we have a target nucleus, target target material in the form of a foil or a pellet. And so the projectile will be going in the up, uh, in the forward direction. But this, whenever there is a inelastic scattering, then the gamma ray can be emitted in all directions. And you put a detector at 90 degree because in the forward detector you cannot keep the detector because there will be a projectile beam will be passing through that zero degree. So you put at 90 degree, the background is much less. And you detect the gamma ray. So you can put a HPG at 90 degree with respect to the projectile beam and record the gamma spectrum. It's an online experiment. While the beam is falling, gamma rays are being measured. You measure it for some time. And then so you, you can you record the gamma spectrum of the products that are formed. So this characteristic gamma rays tell you what are the elements. If you take the peak area and you can use some standards, you can find out the concentration of these elements in the material. So impurities or even bulk material factorization can be done using inelastic scan. Then comes the direct reaction. The direct reaction happen in a very short time scale of the order of 10 power minus 22 seconds. Essentially this time scale is because of the time that nucleus projectile will take to cross the nuclear dimensions. So that happens in the region of Two seconds, and so the direct reactions means the the they come in the potential nuclear potential contact with each other, but they don't amalgamate to form a compound nucleus. So the energy is not equilibrated, the mass is not equilibrated. They just you know one step process. You just knock out an electron, a nu nucleon, a proton or a neutron from the nucleus, or it can strip its nu nu particles in a very short time scale. So the type of reactions that are taking place are by this DP reaction, neutron colliding with the target nucleus and a proton is coming out. So neutron is stripped, neutron is stripped of, of a neutron. That neutron is captured by the target nucleus right here. 27 aluminum DP, 28 aluminum. Similarly, alpha tritium, alpha is stripped of one neutron and tritium is going out. Neutron is fusing with the target. Alpha D, a deuteron is going, is closed with target and the deuteron, one deuteron goes out. So like that, this mostly you will find these reactions take place with the low Z nuclei like lithium, helium, tritium, deuteron and so on. One of the very interesting aspect of this direct reaction, particularly here the transfer reaction is, you are transferring a, a, a nucleon neutron from neutron to aluminum 27 which the energetics are quite different from if you consider a neutron captured by aluminum 27. When a neutron is captured by aluminum 27, then the energy that is released is binding energy of neutron in aluminum 28, 7.7 .7 So This is the mass of neutron plus mass of 27 aluminum minus mass of 28 aluminum. This is the energy released and this much energy will go in the excitation of aluminum 28. So the de excitation of aluminum 28 as from 7.7 .7 MeV will take place by the emission of gamma rays. Whereas by DP reaction you are not exciting this to at that high energy because the Q value is different for this reaction. And so if you consider the nucleus in a different excited state, neutron plus 27 aluminum, 28 aluminum, then you will find the 
in the case of neutron capture reaction you may populate it here but in the case of dp reaction you may populate it here and so you see a different energy state populated in this kind of stepping reaction so you can study the nuclear reactions at different energy state and different angular momentum another type of reaction is pickup reactions that means a projectile picks up a nucleon like a here a neutron here a proton to neutron and so on so projectile picks up a particle a nucleon or a nucleon cluster from the target like here nitrogen 14 pd so proton is becoming neutron and escaping so it is picking up a neutron from nitrogen 14 and goes out as a neutron so this kind of reactions are also direct reactions and they all take place at a much smaller time scale so i try to give a schematic of this neutron comes close to the target nucleus and then picks up a neutron from the target nucleus and so this is actually this is a stripping reaction not the pickup reaction the neutron comes to the target nucleus gives a neutron to the target nucleus and proton is going out and the new target plus neutron nucleus is going in that direction. So these are the kind of reactions you know where you populate the low lying states of the nuclei because their Q values are not very high and they in fact the nuclear physics people who study such reactions they study the spectroscopy of low lying states by using transfer reactions of stripping or pickup type. So here the it is the momentum transfer. So when you say a uh, nuclear reactions, you know, the projectile and the projectile wave you can read e raised to psi is called e raised to i k x like plane wave. So k is the momentum of the particle. And so when a like for example here this dp reaction, so the, the projectile is transferring a neutron to the target nucleus. So the neutron momentum can be given in terms of proton momentum. The deuteron momentum and the see like a vector, a vector sum of proton and deuteron momenta to give you the neutron moment. So, how much momentum is transferred to the target nucleus that is Kn and that can be given in terms of so you can you know the momentum of the proton, you know the momentum of the neutron, so you can tell how much is the momentum transferred to the target nucleus and that momentum then you can transform to the angular momentum in terms of r cross p. So, P is K and KH cross and R maximum since they are peripheral collisions, they are surface variations. So, R can be replaced by the nuclear radius. So, the angular momentum transferred in these nuclear reactions are the neutron momentum and the radius of the target. So, they are the kind of reactions where you transfer some angular momentum and you can see those target static states having that kind of angular momentum. So, People are trying to see spectroscopy of low lying states of target nuclei by means of this direct reaction. So, the nuclear physics community trying to study spectroscopy of low lying states utilize these beams of low jet, low, uh, lower charged particles like protons, neutrons, so on to study the spectroscopy. Okay, so now I will come to the last nuclear reaction mechanism, and that is the most important one that is the compound nucleus reactions. In the compound nuclear reaction, the projectile and target fuse together to form a compound nucleus C and this subsequently this will de excite by emission of particles or gamma ray. So we can say this is an ejectile and this is the heavy residue. We will discuss the more on this subsequently. The important aspects of this are the projectile and target lose their identity. That means the compound nuclear does not know what way it was formed. Kinetic energy is not conserved in the compound nuclear reaction. All the energy, the most of the kinetic energy of the projectile will be converted into the excitation energy of the compound nucleus. The projectile and target nucleus choose to form a compound nucleus. So formation of compound nucleus is the first step. It's a two-step process. In the first step, projectile target fused together to form a compound nucleus. And second step, the compound nucleus de-excites by emission of particles and gamma rays. 
and the most important part is these two steps are independent of each other so whatever is the projectile exerts energy and angular momentum they decide how it will take side it does not depend upon how the which projectile and which target used together to form this component so this is the important assumptions and they have been verified also subsequently so the compound nucleus this sort intense channel means a plus a is called the intense channel how it was formed so for the for the intense channel that means formation of compound nucleus from projectile and target we will call as the first part of the reaction and that is called the intense channel intense channel means how the projectile enter the target to form the compound nucleus and for that the q value is mass of the projectile plus target minus the mass of the compound nucleus into you can say c square to write in terms of the delta m values in mev then we don't need to multiply by the c square secondly the energy available in the center of mass system ecm is equal to projectile energy in the laboratory into mass of target upon mass of target plus projectile so it is the mass fraction of the target to total mass but major suppose the target is heavier then the majority of the energy of projectile goes to center of mass energy and a small fraction will go into the kinetic energy so what goes as the kinetic energy ea into ma upon ma plus ma this fraction is also called as the required energy so some part goes as required energy some part goes as the ecm energy available in the center of mass system and that energy available in the center of mass system adds to the excess energy of the compound so the compound nucleus excess energy is equal to energy available in center of mass system ecm plus the q value and the another important property of compound nucleus is the angular momentum of the compound nucleus which is the projectile angular momentum plus target angular momentum and the the orbital angular momentum that the projectile brings in the l value for a particular collision so this is the these are the spins and this is the orbital angular momentum they couple vectorially to give rise to a resultant angular momentum so the net excitation of the compound nucleus depends upon excitation energy and the angular momentum these are the two important properties of the compound nucleus that will govern how the nucleus will decay the independent hypothesis i was talking about that means the formation of the compound nucleus and its decay these are two independent steps in the compound nuclear mechanism and this has been verified by one experiment of a indian scientist s n goshal way back in 1950 and very interesting experiment he carried out that is he formed a same compound nucleus zinc 64 by two different reactions alpha plus nickel 60 zinc 64 proton plus copper 63 zinc 64 and this compound nucleus is excited this excited compound nucleus can emit a neutron two neutrons or proton and neutron giving rise to different products zinc 63 zinc 62 and copper 60 so what i have shown here on the left hand side in this graph is the variation of the cross section the particular product formed by two reactions for example this first reaction see let us see zinc 63 one end product zinc 63 here you can see nickel 60 alpha and zinc 63 copper 63 p and zinc 63 so for for nickel 63 for zinc nickel nickel 60 this is the reaction And for copper 63 this is the reaction so you can see here the both the, the ratio of the two uh, the cross section for the two channels different inter channels are nearly constant this is small difference in the cross section value actually may be due to angular momentum because it is very difficult to match its such energy and angular momentum. so you can see the proton energy and alpha energy are matched so that it gives same its such energy but angular momentum could be slightly vary and that's why there could be small difference but by and large you see other product copper 62 alpha pn and ppn 
both the reactions lead to similar cross section zinc 62 you can see the whether you form by nickel plus alpha or copper plus proton the cross sections for the individual products are nearly same that was the experimental verification of the independent hypothesis that means whatever channel you use to form a compound nucleus the excitation the deexcitation of the compound nucleus is independent of that that is what i tried to explain using the experiment of sn goshal for a compound nucleus process i will stop here and take up the detailed mechanism of compound nucleus in the next part thank you